Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this afternoon's session, Extensible Open Source Integrations of Open Library Folio Projects. Um, my name is Stephanie Buck. I am the Assistant uh, Secretary of the Open Library Foundation, and I am just here to make sure that things run smoothly for our panelists. Uh, please remember we're being recorded and uh, to use the Q&A box for your questions. Uh, moderators will uh, make sure that uh, we get through as many questions as possible at the end of the session. And with that, I will hand it over to Jen Colt and Jesse Konecki. Welcome. Um, so today we're gonna talk about extensible open source integrations of OLF projects, Folio, ViewFind, GoKB, and ReShare working together. So we're gonna see how these uh, various OLF projects can or will work together to maximize the power of open source development and the power of community. So, um, we're gonna start our panelists are Damian Katz, who works on Folio and ViewFind, and is with Villanova. Kirsten kemner heek who's working on Folio and GoKB and is from VZG. Martina Schilt, who is working on Folio and GoKB and is also from VZG. And Ian Hardy, who's working on ReShare and ViewFind and is from Index Data. And Sebastian Hammer, who is with ReShare and Folio and also from Index Data. So we wanna give everybody a chance to speak and have questions at the end. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with Demian. I will just share my screen. Hello everyone, I'm Damian Katz from Villanova University. You've probably mostly just listened to me talking about ViewFind at length. So now I get to talk about ViewFind some more. So thank you. But now I get to add the exciting element of Folio to the conversation. So let's start by talking about why you might want to integrate ViewFind and Folio. Uh, as I mentioned in the ViewFind introduction earlier today, ViewFind is a flexible open source discovery layer. And interestingly, Folio doesn't include an OPAC or discovery layer at all, which was a conscious choice because there are many options out there and it didn't make sense for the Folio community to build something when pre-existing tools already existed. So there's an obvious uh, potential link here. Uh, it's also worth saying that like Folio, ViewFind is designed to be both metadata agnostic. It can work well with MARC data, but it can also work with other types of data and also multi-tenant. So it supports large scale situations where you're potentially serving uh, different instances to different people. Uh, finally, ViewFind offers a seamless way of transitioning between systems by separating your user interface layer from your backend systems. Uh, you insulate your user base against change uh, when you need to make internal uh, architectural changes. So for example, if you're considering migration to Folio, but you're not ready to commit yet, you could always stand up a ViewFind instance in front of your current system and then at some point in the future, if you were to transition to Folio, uh, you would just reconfigure ViewFind to talk to Folio instead of your current system. And the user experience would remain essentially exactly the same. So if this has convinced you that you should integrate ViewFind and Folio, let's talk about the ways in which these two systems integrate. There are really two main categories of integration. Uh, the first is integration of bibliographic records uh, for indexing. So ViewFind is a search system. Obviously, it needs something to search, and that something is bibliographic records from your ILS. Uh, there are a few different ways that you could potentially do this. Uh, one commonly used uh, approach is OAI PMH. And since Folio has OAI PMH modules, uh, you can certainly harvest your records and index them uh, over OAI PMH. Uh, another option is to fetch records directly uh, through APIs. You can get things out of Folio's uh, record storage and index them that way, uh, which potentially, at least at present, has the advantage of allowing you to get the data in perhaps more flexible ways. And the, the last way is perhaps more of a dream than a reality right now, but I think that there's a lot of potential for this, 
which is real-time integration. I think it would be wonderful if when you updated a record in Folio, it just notified an indexing service and sent that record to ViewFind instantly. Uh, as I say, I don't think anyone has accomplished this yet, but I'd love to see it. And I think the, the infrastructure is growing to support this kind of application uh, over time. Uh, the other broad category of integration is real-time data retrieval. So ViewFind has an index of bibliographic records, but there are some things that aren't in the index, like the availability of individual items, which can change uh, frequently, or information about user accounts. So uh, both of these things need to get retrieved in real time uh, from the ILS so that people can find out what's on the shelf and people can uh, perform common patron services like placing holds, renewing books, and so on. So let's talk about the current status of the integration between uh, ViewFind and Folio. In terms of bibliographic record integration, uh, there are several institutions that are doing this in production. So it is absolutely working, uh, but I am aware of some limitations. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the OAI PMH uh, module in Folio currently is just feeding out bibliographic records. And so if you want to index additional data like uh, holdings or item level information, you have to get clever with the API and do some extra work. Uh, so I would say best practices around this are still developing. It can be done, but I suspect that if a few more institutions work together on this, uh, we may be able to establish a pattern that's easier to follow uh, in the future. As far as the real-time data retrieval portion, that's much more mature. Um, in ViewFind, the code that connects to the ILS for this real-time data is called an ILS driver. Uh, and ViewFind's ILS driver for Folio is fully built. I'll take a moment to acknowledge EBSCO for providing some initial funding through a Folio innovation grant, which allowed Villanova to develop the first draft of this. And also thanks to Index Data and others for ongoing development of this. Uh, Ian Hardy, who's in the room with us right now, has done quite a bit of work on this. So thank you, Ian, and everyone. Uh, nearly all of the functionality we could want in the ILS driver is now implemented. Uh, and some things are even fairly flexible and configurable. For example, uh, how IDs are dealt with. You can use human readable IDs or UUIDs for some functionality. So you have some, some flexibility in how you fit your systems together. Uh, but all is still fairly young. I'm sure there is still some room for growth and perhaps some advanced features that can still be added. Uh, but as I say, this is actually quite mature and being used in several places. So that's the quick high level summary of Folio ViewFind integration. But if you want to learn more, uh, you can find the code and the configuration for the driver on, on GitHub in the ViewFind repository. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can also reach out to me directly and I'll be happy to tell you more. So there's my email address, or you can find me on the OLF or ViewFind Slacks and on Twitter. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And next up is Kirsten and Martina. Yeah, so I will share my screen. Okay. Yeah, hello everybody. Thank you for having us. My colleague Martina and I will present how we work integrated Folio ERM and the global open knowledge base. And a bit of background um, in what environment we are doing that. We are the headquarter of the Common Library Network, GBV, one of six networks in Germany. And this is a lovely picture of where we are situated. And you see a map right here. So we mainly deal with the north and the east of Germany. We are running a, a regional union catalog based on OCLC CBS system and a fitting local library system up until today called OCLC LBS. Both are, as you see, quite 
um, well aged. And um, we are dealing with about 200 libraries in 30 sites, and most of them are already hosted in VZG and around 19 in a full service environment. And additionally, we are offering discovery and digital services. So that's why we are combining now other services and hope we are well prepared to. So we build up a folio library service platform for the GBV libraries. And our first live sites are the ZBW in Kiel and Hamburg and the SUUB Bremen for more on an implementation process and a lot more in the backlog. And what we do is we are combining the usage of the global open knowledge base as metadata knowledge base for electronic resources and modules of Folio ERM. And we are using the agreements, licenses, ERM comparison, organization, users, local KB admin to combine the GoKB and in near future we are working on the inventory app so that's the setting we are living in and why do we do this with folio erm because our recent library system is not providing any erm functionality and therefore we started with these pieces so we are talking about partial implementation and we are using out of the folio um, erm modules the package and platform information title lists we are linking the information out of agreements to the orders. Um, we will deal with invoices, budgets, and of course our organizations, our vendors are stored there and the licenses app. Um, the management of local metadata is essential. So we are using tags and we are preparing the sources to be displayed in the discovery systems and to provide the correct coverage and customized URLs. To do all this, we are maintaining the data in Folio and then we are exporting them to the union catalog. That's why I um, laid out the environment before. And from the union catalog, they are pushed through to the discovery services. So that's the local system, Folio ERM. And the second piece is global open knowledge base. So we are managing the electronic resources, the packages mainly, and we are dealing with different levels. So for one thing, we have the reference title. We have the title and platform and the title and package. Everyone body who's dealing with ERM knows the challenge who's in that. And therefore, we are um, adding more reference and data and data enrichment. And the most important thing are the unique identifiers. We are relying heavily on the identifiers in the whole life cycle of an electronic resource. So from the pre-acquisition process through the maintenance in the GoKB, in Folio ERM, and then in the end in the union catalog and the discovery services, we, all, we always want to have access to the right source. And to provide this, the global open knowledge base works on a cooperatively curatory concept. The participating libraries are responsible for maintaining the packages and for the uploads, updates, and change tracking. So that the main advantage really is that we are working in an open source environment with open data cooperatively, and we are providing identifiers. And how that goes together with the two pieces I just introduced, that will be done by my colleague, Martina. Yes, thank you. I will now continue with the um, advantages of using Folio ERM connected to the Global Open Knowledge Base, the GoKB. And Folio ERM harvests the GoKB data on a regular basis if the GoKB is connected as external source. And that includes unique identifiers for titles and for packages, and among other things, links to the titles on the provider platforms. The change tracking is possible in Folio, so Folio receives the package updates via GoKB and the changes in title lists, and those then are trackable within Folio, no one needs to leave the system, and this information is exportable to other systems as well. 
You have the acquisition options transparently visible. For instance, you can see whether a title is purchasable as a single title or only as part of a package. And there is the availability in different packages transparently visible as well. And on the next slide, we have a screenshot of Folio's local knowledge base. In the above orange box, you have the identifiers, and below you have the options for acquiring e-resources as a package or as individual titles. And we have another screenshot on the next slide. This is a title in a package on a specific platform. So you have the title on platform URL, and um, you can see when the title joined the package via this accessible from date. And on the right side, you have the possibility to, to suppress the display in discovery via this flag that you can set to yes or no as part of the local management of data. And on the next slide, we have um, a diagram that shows the GBV data flows around Folio and GoKB. And we have several databases for different purposes. On the left above, in one of the light gray boxes, we have the ebook pool. There are the records with the rich descriptive metadata for ebooks created. And those include the unique identifiers that are needed. Next to that, we have the journal database for the cataloging of journals and e-journals. And the records for journals are created with the unique identifiers as well. These records and the rich description is delivered to the union catalog that's on the right side as the other light green box. And this includes really the rich descriptive metadata and the unique identifiers. Then we have the green box, that's the GoKB. And the GoKB data is enriched by the core bibliographic metadata and the unique identifiers from ebook pool and the journal database. And in the GoKB, the packaging happens and the GoKB does the change tracking. And in the middle, the orange box is Folio and Folio, as mentioned already, harvests the data, the package metadata and the package content, which are the e-resources from the GoKB. And in Folio, the local package, uh, the local collection management happens, sorry. And then we are developing an API. That's the arrow to the right side to the union catalog to export the package metadata and the package content, the holdings and items to the union catalog. And this will work via a match and merge process, which is possible due to the unique identifiers that are really handed over across all databases. And the holdings and items will be added to the full bibliographic records in Union Catalog. From the Union Catalog to Folio Inventory, there is an online update mechanism that is already perfectly running to create and update instances, holdings and items in inventory for print and electronic resources. And the last database is the gray box, um, that's the discovery, and the base for the discovery system is the union catalog, the discovery receives the individual bibliographic metadata holdings and items from the union catalog, and the license and access data from Folio ERM so that the patrons can find and access the holdings, the resources that a library owns. On the last slide, we have a brief summary. We have several databases. Each has a specific purpose of the journal database for the rich descriptive metadata for journals and e-journals, the ebook pool for the rich descriptive metadata for e-books. And in a, a bit in the center, we have the global open knowledge base that is for the packaging and the change tracking. And there is a curatorial concept behind. And as library management system, we have Folio for the local collection management for physical and electronic resources. That's the central origin for reference locations and access in union catalog and in other local catalogs as well, and in the discovery system. And with that said, we are through our presentation and thank you. Thank you, uh, Sebastian and Ian. I think you're first Ian. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the viewfind and vshare integration. Uh, so I'll do a quick overview of um, where viewfind fits into the vshare system. And then we'll do have a quick look at our short demo and uh, then discuss how uh, some of viewfind's features and how we're using them. 
So Project ReShare is an uh, open standards-based uh, system for library resource sharing, so uh, interlibrary loan and such. Um, and it supports discovery, delivery, and fulfillment type of workflows. Uh, so painting with a broad brush, um, the components that are involved in a ReShare system are a shared index, which represents uh, all the holdings of a network of, of lenders. Um, you know, so, so many libraries in a consortium will have their, their holdings in this one, one sort of inventory space. Um, a discovery system for patient facing uh, searching and requesting of the items in the shared index. And then uh, I guess I'll call a reshare system or reshare tenant, which would, um, which would be the, the business logic application for directory and fulfillment where staff would be doing you know, library loan work. Um, and, you know, we've chosen to use, uh, to use ViewFind with, for, for discovery in our case, because we found uh, ViewFind was quite flexible and uh, we, we got a lot of help from being in to sort of sorting things out. So that's been really nice. Uh, but, you know, it's not entirely necessary that you would use um, ViewFind for discovery here. Uh, we're, we're hoping that people can, can swap in other things if they want to. Uh, so the, the functionality that we're looking for out of ViewFind is we're looking for uh, that sort of patron facing search and uh, searching functionality, which is you know, the main thing that VFind does. Uh, we're, we're, we're having patrons log in uh, to VFind uh, from several different institutions into one VFind sort of tenant or interface. Um, we're providing a mechanism for placing requests and passing them into reshare uh, for fulfillment. And then we're also using uh, ViewFind's built-in OAI PMH server interface to allow members of the resource sharing consortium to uh, harvest the contents of the shared index for their own analysis or um, uh, any sort of purpose that they would want to perform. So I'll, I'll show a quick boxes and arrows chart, um, which is hopefully legible. Um, so the, the sort of basic workflow um, that a request going through the ViewFind system is that it will begin with the user uh, logging in or interacting with ViewFind here, which is over on the left. And uh, we're using a, a system called QCloak as an identity broker, which I'll talk about a little bit more um, to, to allow um, that one ViewFind interface to, to support a, a, a large number of different authentication options. Um, and then uh, the request from ViewFind will get passed into an open URL resolver, which is a, a separate service that we're running um, in open URL format. Uh, and the information that's included there is a, a patron's home institution and bibliographic information for the request, uh, at which point it will be moved into a research system for fulfillment. Um, I'm gonna just quick show a few, um, oops. Uh, so here's here's one a ViewFind instance here that's connected to um, a reshare system. Uh, so here um, the the holdings representing a, 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 a consortium here, uh, and so you can see we're showing, you know, that this this item belongs to multiple institutions, and we're allowing a request button. Um, so for login. You know, we have a where you from page, and these are different sample integrations here. I'll just log in with a kind of a dummy account here. Um, and this will allow me to place a request. Uh, and this is now we're looking at that open URL resolver type software that I was showing, and I can select a, a pickup location associated with the library that my patron is from and submit a crest request to uh, from reshare to there. So at this point, it's getting passed off to the, the reshare tenants themselves. So that's just a, a sort of really quick demo. Um, I'll mention that uh, you know this this view find is representing the holdings in the shared index, and for that we're using um, a, a very simple folio system uh, with, with only inventory installed. Uh, so we should be able to find the, the same item in here. I think it's this guy. Uh, so we can see that it's got the same uh, holdings displayed here. If I can find it, uh, you know, West Point and RIT here. Um, I'll jump back into the slideshow here. Uh, so, so one challenge we had uh, was supporting login for multiple institutions uh, who would potentially be using different types of campus sign-in systems. And ViewFind has has a pretty great support already for um, 
for different authentication solutions. Um, it could be iOS based, Shibboleth, Fixed, and, and, and more. Um, but we settled on using a technology called Keycloak as an identity broker, which allows us a little more separation so we can mess with identity, uh, our system without really messing with Defined very much. So Keycloak's job is to um, accept sign in from different identity providers and sort of massage the user records and present them as the same. So they look exactly the same to Defined, um, which gives us a little bit of flexibility. Um, and Keycloak supports login from, we're using SAML and OIDC right now, but it also supports LDAP, Active Directory, and uh, sort of custom integrations as well. Um, so another feature that we're looking for out of Define is that request, and you saw me hit the request button there. Uh, and, and basically, we're using an open URL format uh, for the request. Um, and so, the, so we did some light customization to Define's record driver to add in the patron's user ID. So it's available to put in that, uh, that request. But other than that, we're just using the Folio driver, which Demian presented with most of the patron uh, uh, empowerment features turned off that wouldn't, wouldn't apply in this case. And then finally, we're using an uh, OEI PMH server to allow uh, consortium members to, to harvest the, the holdings of that shared index. And uh, so, you know, there's opportunities for doing more with, uh, with Vfind. Right now, it's very lightly customized, if at all. Um, you know, we could, we could say, create a set, set of patron empowerment functions for reshare, like uh, being able to provide some more transparency into current request status. Uh, or more up-to-date availability type information, which would be, have to be handled differently for reshare than it would for Folio. So those are some opportunities for more development. And I think we're going to save questions until the, until the very end, so I'll turn it over to Sebastian. All right, thank you again. Um, uh, and the, yes, I'm, I'm Sebastian. I'm going to talk about the integration and the relationship between Folio and reshare. I started the morning with a uh, a nicely laid out uh, and dispositioned presentation, which, as often happens, was completely scrambled by a really well timed and 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 very relevant keynote address this morning. Um, and so many of the concepts and ideas resonated with me that um, my mind got turned upside down. But I will try to navigate my way through this and and still make a little bit of sense for you guys if I can. Um, so let me share my screen. Oh. I think somebody, Ian, are you still sharing? Yep, let me see. So, um, Reshare began, uh, it's a couple, three years old at this point. It actually started, it got its formal kickoff um, at a Wolf, uh, the WolfCon meeting in uh, North Carolina, of all things. So, the relationship uh, with Folio began very early on. Um, it grew out of, of uh, informal conversations amongst different stakeholders over the course of six to 12 months were based largely on frustration with what was felt like a shrinking marketplace for solutions for um, infrastructure for resource sharing. Um, thinking back to, to um, uh, what Tom said this morning, uh, I, I very much do see libraries at, as participating in, in a network that takes many different shapes, but one of the really important ones uh, and one of the, the older ones is, is resource sharing. Um, and the types of technology that supported that function have become um, uh, somewhat stale. Uh, the, the set of choices had diminished and ultimately led a group of organizations to come together to form this project. Um, uh, over, the, over the last couple of years, it's grown to a fairly impressive membership uh, made up of, uh, of uh, academic libraries, uh, library resource sharing consortia, general purpose consortia, as well as uh, software developers and service providers. Um, we invest, co-invest in the development of, of reshare. Uh, some organizations provide substantial amounts of, of uh, person time into development and, and subject expertise. Others provide um, uh, uh, funding uh, and, and others participate in, in kind of the steering of the projects. Um, we developed a, um, 
we developed a governance model in kind of an organic fashion, uh, thinking back to just the importance of the community, which in many ways I feel is more important, um, more critical to the success of a project than the software itself. Um, is the community and the way that you capture and, and guide that community through a governance model that allow people to, uh, to feel that they have a way to influence the direction of the project. Um, it grew very organically from a, a single weekly meeting of what became the steering committee. Um, but in many ways, we used the folio project as our blueprint. As the project grew and the governance model grew, we added um, project teams. Um, in a sense, the steering committee kind of owns the, the, the epic level direction of the project, the strategic direction. Um, and we've set up groups for communication, community engagements. There's a product management group that sets up sort of feature level direction. And we use uh, a groups of subject matter experts to hash out functional requirements at a detailed level. And then we have a development team that is at this point made up of, of uh, contributors from index data, uh, knowledge integration in the UK, um, as well as several libraries and consortia at this point. Um, so that's kind of the structure. Um, we decided very early on that we would build, uh, reshare on the Folio platform. Um, it gave us a number of advantages in terms of having a starting point of, of uh, a system that already uh, could provide a, a responsive, adaptive use interface. It provided uh, a model for permission management. And we also saw a real opportunity to rethink resource sharing, the larger space of resource sharing from kind of modular and app-based uh, perspective. So this is kind of the console of the interface that people encounter when they come to reshare. Each library is essentially a tenant uh, in potentially a multi-tenant system. And uh, you have apps like a, uh, a directory app app that allows you to model out and um, uh, and see the members of your consortium for resource sharing purposes. Um, there is a request app that is fed incoming requests from the discovery layer that, uh, that Ian just showed you. Um, uh, basically, people discover materials to borrow using the discovery layer, which is fed from the, uh, from the, the shared inventory, the shared index. And these requests can be manipulated uh, by the borrowing library, uh, where you can go and you can see information about the, the user, you can see information about the material that you're trying to borrow. Um, you can see what the potential suppliers are fed by the, the shared index, and you can see what's been happening to this request so far. You can even communicate uh, using text messages um with uh, the potential uh lending library so there's an app basically that there are apps optimized for for the borrowing and the lending side respectively and the plan is over time to add additional apps to the system to support things like shipping uh integration with the shipping companies management of boxing and unboxing shipments and and so on uh there's also an app called update that lets you do kind of batch updates to uh to larger numbers of requests at one time I'm not going to dig deeper into reshare itself today. Uh, I would encourage you to to visit the session tomorrow at 10:40, I think, Eastern time, where Kristen Wilson and uh, I think Nora will be uh, going through the system in more detail. What I really kind of wanted to capture was just the notion that we've built reshare on top of the folio platform. So we essentially started with an empty slate, an empty folio, uh, an empty or copy and stripes, and then we populated it with apps specifically specific to this application. Um, there's a separate tenant that runs uh, the shared index, which is fed from a, a harvesting module that index data has built. Um, I can show you that possibly briefly um, if I can get at it. Uh, the harvest that basically allows us to manage individual feeds because the inventory, the shared inventory may contain records from a number of different libraries. We needed one place where we could manage those feeds, whether they are based on OEI PMH or something else. So this allows us to set up these harvesting jobs um, to support different kinds of harvesting from kind of raw mark files to, uh, to uh, OEI PMH to XML downloads and whatnot and set up normalization pipelines for each one. Um, it also uses a simple module that we've built that extends inventory with the capability to match on 
other things than just uh, uh, UUID uh, or human readable ID. So essentially it allows us to use a match key type system to, uh, to import these records from different sources and have them find each other in shared instances. Um, and uh, incidentally, we are working with GBB using this same code, the same harvester and the same update module in uh, inventory to support synchronization with uh, the German uh, national or the German union catalog. Um, so we're finding shared use there. Um, and one thing I wanna show you just kind of to finish up uh, was a thing that Ian actually set up over the last few days, which I thought was kind of neat, uh, if I can find it again. Uh, oh, I may have lost it now. I'm sorry, Ian. I think that's it. No, oh, it is. It is. Uh, so I, we had we had kind of we had built these apps on the Folio platform, and and we we had kind of wondered all along what would it look like to actually drop those apps into Folio, and and Ian did, and it it worked well, and it's interesting. Uh, only because thinking about the benefits and opportunities that arise from um, uh, bringing these things together into one space, right? Um, for as a service provider, as a consortium, you can run uh, a reshare and you have the opportunity to bring in parts of Folio to extend your, your resource sharing system. You could bring in EIM as a supplementary service or you could bring in all the Folio. And now you have uh, basically a, a folio system that you can offer as a consortial service. Looking at it from a folio perspective, um, you can potentially see adding these apps to your folio system and thinking a little bit about the integration and how they fit together. Now you have folio with the addition of a fully fledged resource sharing system based on open standards and, and all that good stuff. So there are mutual benefits that we get from building on a shared platform. Um, using our copy stripes has also enabled uh, us to contribute more resources to Okapi Stripes as, as a team, as a company, because we now have multiple different potential revenue sources that we're looking at for, for, for the platform. Um, it's allowed Ian to engage, of course, with Viewfind, but also with, with, uh, with the Corefolio team. So we, we get all of these kind of network, network benefits, and, and I think we also get potentially a vision or a notion of a larger folio community um, that includes not just people that are in the folio group, in the, the, the PC, in the, 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 the SIGs, but a larger community of different teams and projects that lean on the same platform and develop it in, in, in different sorts of directions. I think we're looking potentially at a model for addressing some of these larger challenges that we're talking about in the keynote as well. Uh, if we want to engage with and tackle the larger problem of, of scholarly communication, could we imagine something like Folio or Folio itself as a substrate for communities to come together to tackle some of these problems? Um, so I hope that that shares a little bit of, of my excitement of, of what the projects have to offer each other. And again, I just encourage you to join the session tomorrow if you wanna learn more about ReShare itself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a question for Kirsten and Martina. Uh, Laura is interested in how you made decisions about using inventory. Is it just for print? And if you hope to have any direct interaction between inventory and any of the ERM apps. Yes, uh, thank you, Laura, for that question. And we are using the inventory for physical and electronic resources. And as connection between the two, between inventory and ERM, we have our union catalog. And so the direct linking between ERM and inventory is no mandatory requirement so far for us, because via the union catalog, we have P and E in our inventory in the end. Does that answer the question? I think so. I don't have any more questions in the queue right now. I'm tempted to ask one, is that okay? Um, Please do. Oh, <laughs> I was just wondering, um, listening, especially about reshare and viewfind and, um, 
there are things that you might need from Folio that aren't there yet that you might build or um, things that might be needed to be changed in ViewFind for Folio. And I'm just kind of wondering how these development cycles feed back into each other so that you don't end up with a Folio that's you know, just for reshare or a ViewFind that's just for Folio um, or even or with GoKB, like how you kind of think of these uh, development projects feeding each other. What one possible answer I could offer is I think that there is an opportunity for, you know, we 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 chose to use Folio as an infrastructure because we knew it, we were comfortable with it, and we felt that the, the vision and the architecture fit well with what we're trying to do. Um, but despite the fact that we were very comfortable with the Folio platform, it still was not nearly as easy as it could have been to pick it up and use it for a different purpose. Um, I think that many people probably in this room who've had colleagues who've tried to stand up Folio have encountered the fact that Folio is big and it tends to be difficult to take just a little slice of Folio um, that you might be interested in looking at. The whole thing has a tendency to, to come along. Um, and I think the Folio could really win by investing and thinking about the opportunities for other projects to pick it up and think about perhaps the packaging and the documentation of or copy and stripes to make it to make a smoother runway for projects that that want to utilize the platform in that way. So that's one area where I could see that that could be sort of a benefit from more more of a conversation. I think from the the viewfind side of this, uh, one of the lessons is that the more systems you integrate, the better you can integrate systems because you start to see patterns and find common solutions to problems. So in terms of integrating with Folio, you know, it was maybe the 15th integrated library system we had integrated with. So it was kind of just a matter of filling in the template and having conversations with the, the Folio community when things didn't quite seem to align. And in some cases, you know, we would bend on the viewfind side. And in some cases, there would be changes on the folio side, but we, we got through it all together. But certainly making these things multi-purpose and then testing their boundaries tends to be beneficial to all parties involved. Great, thank you. Uh, there's another question about, um, a question about GoKB. Is it a viable option for US libraries or is it already being used in the US? Um, yeah, I was just about to type in the answer. Um, I can tell you, um, I would like to point uh, Bob to the GoKB presentation tomorrow to learn more about the possible abilities to use it in an international context. Right now, we just have German customers, but that can be changed and shall be changed. That's sufficient. Thank you. All right, I think we have one more. Um, to Sebastian, how do you vision the integration options for Folio or Reshare with external services like CMS, Headless in particular? These are things I don't know what they are. Hopefully Sebastian does. Digital repositories, et cetera, that are core services for any institute looking to leverage a microservice-based architecture presented by Folio. I think there's a number of, of possible options. And I think we've we've played with several different options and 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 over the course of Folio, especially uh, in Reshare, when we think about integration, we often are thinking about other resource sharing platforms. But in Folio, certainly there's a need to integrate Folio with lots of different kinds of systems. And, and I think we've run the gamut from thinking in terms of building sort of single apps that, that, that might help you search across multiple different systems to building middleware that could actually synchronize content between different systems. Um, so I don't think that there's a single solution, and that's OK. Uh, there may even be competing solutions for any given external application. Um, I would love to see personally an integration between Folio and, and, a, and a headless CMS type system to make it easier for people to build, uh, build and integrate uh, Folio into portals and such. Um, so not a clean, simple answer, but, but I think Folio does present lots of different opportunities and options for doing that kind of thing.
we have one more, but it's 11, but it's uh, one minute before our end. So um, for ReShare, if you're looking to be a long-term solution for uh, ILL, a community participation seems equally as important as the software. Are you looking at options to have libraries be lenders, borrowers, and the ReShare network without necessarily using the ReShare platform? That is a really good question. Um, ReShare was designed from the bottom up to use ISO 18626 as its peer-to-peer -peer communications protocol. So even though it's, it's, you know, even if all libraries in, in a ReShare network uh, are running the ReShare software, they are using 18626, which is the ISO standard for ILO messaging. So in principle, yes, it's possible. In practice, it opens some interesting questions that that need to be explored and that we actually are talking about in the project these days of how do you manage your directory of your, your, your consortial membership how do you how do you model out load balancing in a way that works across different software systems um, i think you you start to realize that there's a mix of standards-based interactions and things that are more ad hoc uh, bands that need to be addressed um, on the flip side though there's also active work going on on the standards in this space and I think that there's a real opportunity to have have different companies and platforms engaging with this and trying to come up with solutions that will allow people to work across platforms. Uh, it's not trivial, but it's definitely possible. Great. And I think that that's our time. And the next session is at 2 p.m. So thank you all so much. This was a really great insight into how these projects work together and how these communities are going to work together. It's super exciting. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.